Everybody, as we promised you every single Wednesday, we are going to bring you a personality, information, someone from the blockchain, from cryptocurrency, that is a deep diver, a grinder, that gives you good alpha and good information. We also have a good conversation. So today, I have a very special guest here on The Price Report, our new show every single Wednesday. And welcome, my one of my favorite guests. We've been on uh, shows together before. We've shared the screen, and you may have known him, my man. Frankie Candles. What's up, my buddy? How you doing? What's going on, Lifer? Dude, thank you so much for having me on, man. I'm, I'm excited to get this going. This is amazing, man. Um, yeah, just before we started the stream, I wanted to get a little bit of, uh, you know, a sense of kind of like how you got into crypto. Um, mm-hmm. How did you link up with Ben in the Bit Squad? I'm so interested in like how that all happened. Do you go to the studio every day? Do you have your own studio at home? Just bunch of loaded questions that throw right at you when you start, you know? <laughs> yeah, man. I, I So I actually like telling this story. Uh, it, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of a cool story. So uh, I got into crypto at first in 2016. I actually, to be 100% honest, I don't know if it was in 2016 or 2017. I want to say 2016, but it was in, uh, it was, you know, probably halfway. I, I guess it was probably 2016. It was, you know, during the 2017 bull run, uh, essentially, is when I first found out about crypto. Uh, always was, um, you know, fascinated with technical analysis. Always was kind of self-teaching myself TA. Uh, and, you know, started off, uh, I wouldn't say starting off trading stocks, but started off really uh, teaching myself TA and stocks. So that kind of, I already had that spark in like the financial markets. Uh, and then in 2017, I found out about crypto and I was like, hold on a second. I was like, this is like the stock market, except it's open 24 seven. And, uh, you know, once I realized that I was absolutely hooked. Um, so that was kind of how I got into crypto. Uh, I think the first, first thing I ever bought in crypto was probably Litecoin followed by XRP, uh, made a little bit of money, but, you know, realized that I didn't get in at the best time in that market. Um, and then, so that was kind of my intro into crypto. And then, uh, just been, you know, as soon as, you know, as soon as that happened, I was basically just, you know, crypto quickly, quickly took over my life. I'm, it was one of those people that gets, you know, finds something and gets completely obsessed with it. Crypto was definitely that thing, uh, you know, fell down the rabbit hole, went through the bear market, uh, you know, didn't really, uh, you know, wasn't really that educated on the four year cycle at that point, or at least during 2017. None of us were. And then, that was the problem, right? I mean, stock market, we didn't know that it was going to happen to us, you know? Right. Threw exactly. A curveball in there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. And I'm thinking, like, okay, maybe this thing, you know, maybe this thing isn't going to come back. Maybe it was just a big bubble. It's over forever. Uh, but I always just stayed with it and, uh, you know, just continued, you know, even just with TA in general, just always, uh, you know, just training myself, self teaching. And, uh, you know, trading probably from or trading crypto probably from like, you know, maybe end of 2017, early 2018 on. Um, But yeah, so then at the time I was actually, uh, you know, crypto was kind of my side hustle, just always kind of, you know, hiding the uh, hiding the charts from the boss and stuff as they walk by. Uh, And then, yeah. And then, you know, I had my own business in um, 2020 and 2021. And that's really kind of when I found uh, Ben or BitBoy for anybody who doesn't know who I'm talking about. Uh, But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of when I found Ben's channel. I would watch him a lot just to get the news and stuff. Loved his channel. Thought he seemed like such a great guy. Uh, He taught he taught me a lot. And, uh, you know, there was one day where I heard I was watching a behind the scenes video of the BitBoy Crypto office. And uh, I heard them talk about how they were located in um, Georgia. And it was just Georgia's always been my dream state. I, I have family down here. Uh, so I was just like, you know what, you know, maybe I, you know, because I have a background in TV production. So uh, I was like, you know what, let me reach out to these guys. I see that they make a lot of content. I have my own business, but you know, I love crypto. I've kind of been waiting to see if I could find an avenue into crypto uh, to work in it full time. And uh, so I heard them say they were in Atlanta. I, I kind of Googled the the place they were mentioning a restaurant. So I Googled that restaurant and noticed that it was about 15 minutes away from my family. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to send a cold email. I'm just going to shoot a cold email. Wow. You know, if they, if they answer me, I'll, uh, you know, maybe I'll go in, try to get an interview, stay with my family. If it works out, it works out. Uh, so I shot a cold, shot him a cold email. And, uh, yeah, like five minutes later, TJ called me and he's like, Hey, uh, we saw your resume. Like, we think you'd be a great fit. You want to come down? Uh, and then, yeah. And then that's basically how I got in with them. And then, um, you know, uh, eventually when they decided I worked there for about, um, for about, I would say about eight months, maybe, uh, just kind of doing, uh, helping them a lot out with video, always trading on the side, just always the guy that was, uh, Hey, what are the charts looking like, Frankie, you know, always trading. Um, and then when they wanted to make a trading channel, they were like, Hey, who else better to do it than Frank? They asked me if I wanted to do it. And I was really nervous about being on camera. I'll be lifer. I will be honest, man. I the, the biggest thing this I was is awesome. scared this about, is what about people doing like. this. This is, is cool. Like, no. We, yeah. 
I, I was terrified. I was like, I don't know. I've never been on camera. You know, you expose yourself to the public, especially with something like TA. I mean, you, you and I alike, like we basically get up here and it's like, yeah, like you're either going to be right or wrong every single day. You have the whole, you know, the whole community's watching you, you know, they're leaning on you. Um, so, you know, I was just nervous. I was like, what if I'm awkward on camera? And then, uh, you know, I just told myself, you know, just shut up, say yes, figure it out. Uh, and then, yeah, that, that was basically the start. That was kind of the origin story of Frankie Candles. I mean, that just inspired a lot of people. Uh, I always tell people, like today, I talked about how I worked a night shift. I talked about how when I started Divergence, I could only see Hidden for two years. Like, I just, mm -hmm. you know, I was good at Hidden Bullets Divergence, nothing else. So when I teach it, yeah. I always tell everyone, listen, like, you think I was the greatest at all this? No way, you know? Mm -hmm. I had been on camera. I did films. I did rap music and stuff like that. And honestly, I'm pretty critical. You're amazing. Like, you sound, you look like someone that has been trained like me, that had been doing it for a long time. Like, you, you nail it. Eye contact keeping up the momentum. Um, these are things that, that these, there's things that a lot of people take years to, to perfect and you kind of have an, an, an innate, innate ability to do that. Um, I think that's why we connect so easily. It's that like my energy is your energy. It seems to blend so well. Our communities blend. Um, it always feels Absolutely. good when I'm jumping to your stream. It feels good when I see you on my stream. Uh, it's, it's just, I'm really loving the community vibe that I'm getting out of cryptocurrency, like Ben at my house, mm -hmm. seeing the guys yeah. in Sin City Crypto in Vegas, you know, getting to know you, it's like, a, a, you know, first name basis and just really becoming a family. Kellum was on my show last week. Like, I'm yeah. just like really, uh, I'll be on ATB later on today. It's just like, we're like a family, man. It's like constant. So, uh, yeah, this is yeah, awesome. I, yeah, I, you know, I say that all the time, man. I, I, I was, I forget, I was talking to somebody and I was saying, you know, uh, you know, crypto in general, I find that I find a lot of really, really just good human beings in crypto. And, uh, you know, what, one of the things I was talking about was, you know, even on crypto YouTube, we have a bunch, you know, the crypto YouTube family, you know, we all, we all collab together and, you know, we all meet up when we can, uh, you know, at meetups or whatever, or, uh, co uh conferences and, uh, you know, just like in, in, uh, it, it, niching down that even further into TA or technical analysis YouTube or trading YouTube, whatever you want to call it, uh, we have a great community of, of creators. I mean, everybody's just awesome. Everyone's a genuine person. Everyone I've ever been on, anyone who's had me on their show or anyone who I've had on my show, we talk before we go live and it's just like, oh, I feel like I've known you. Like when I first met you, man, I was like, oh, I feel like I've known you forever. Yeah, like, yeah. It's just like an instant connection. And uh, there's something about crypto that I think, um, you know, brings those, you know, it's just, we're all like-minded. And well, I think that, that, you know, makes Good connection. I lived in New York 20 years too. And I remember when I first started starting your channel and even like, I see the, the Queensboro bridge, isn't that right? Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. Or so like, and like, I just got this city five, like Frankie candles over. Hey, you know, yeah. Hey, 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 you know, New York city. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like, I think that was another easy connection for me. Like I, I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, this guy's been around in the city. And that's another thing. It makes you a really good, once you've lived in New York city, like you you become a people person, you know, you talk to yeah. so many people, you interact with people all around the world. Um, you culturally, uh, you know, you have a good cultural sense and, you know, I talked to my Indian cab drivers, Muslim people, you know, yeah. Spanish, Jewish. It didn't matter. I, I learned so much about different cultures um, just doing doing what I did in the city. Um, but, yeah, now that we kind of nestled in, right, we got the whole fireplace yeah. crackled in the background. We're feeling all <laughs> cozy. We're going to jump into our first topic, a topic that's actually very dear to my heart, um, BNB. Just take a look at this article here. Uh, Binance BNB chain plans for explosive growth in 2023 after a breakout year, says Mazari. And, you know, what it breaks down basically, what it's saying is, you know, BNB is actually poised for what looks like a pretty big run in maybe even 2023. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, me, I got into cake early, right? 40 cents. I, I noticed Uniswap was bugging out. The prices were too high. I wanted to do TVLs. I wanted to make money in DeFi. I realized that it was going to be hard, you know, spending $30 to make 50 bucks. Like it didn't work. Right. And, and so I left ETH early, went into BNB, found cake early because ETH had a problem. I made tons of money on, on, on cake. It's like, I realized that there was a roadblock and I went and found an exit. It's like, I was using ways and ways yeah. took me to BNB. So, <laughs> you know, what is your interaction with BNB? Um, if you want to slap a chart up, you can do that yeah. too as well. If you want to just look at, I, I, you know, I could put a chart, you could put a chart up. Either one of us is cool. Uh, just to For give sure. the people kind of an idea. My idea is that it probably looks like it may go to 400, but we don't know, but slap mm -hmm. a chart up there. Let's take a look at it. And then just kind of tell me kind of maybe a story you have with BNB yeah. what you think of and just you know your opinion on on what's going on yeah so uh let me see if i can so boom here we go so i will go ahead and share this chart hopefully can you see that looks gorgeous 
Beautiful. So uh, for BNB, this is kind of what I would be looking at. Now, this is kind of similar to a lot of things that I'm looking at, you know, Bitcoin included. Uh, if we come up to a higher time frame, um, I know you use the volume profiles too. Uh, this is something that I, I absolutely love the volume profiles. And uh, kind of the reason is just because there's, uh, you know, with the volume profile, it I, I like to say that it gives you context into certain levels. Like, obviously, we are hitting up against some uh, resistance here. We have a golden pocket here. Um, obviously, we've been rejected from this level many times. Uh, kind of peaked out there for a second, but uh, it, obviously going to be strong resistance here. But the thing that I love about the volume profile is because uh, it gives us context to the levels, right? So when I'm looking at this, I can see that this is a strong level of resistance. However, I know if we are able to break above this and we fall into this little low volume gap here, mm. we could get an explosive move up. Gaps and the are great, I, huh? I, I absolutely love, I love these. Those and <laughs> the, the reason I bring this up is Money because- Money makers. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you could crack, again, the reason I bring it up is if we are able to break this level, if we could crack into this gap, I am seeing a potential move uh, up to first off this box that we have right here between about 360 and uh, about 376. And that would be probably a short term uh, or a short, uh, yeah, short term target here for BNB, at least for me, if we can get above this golden pocket, flip it to support, uh, bringing us into this low volume gap. And flying us into uh, potentially get to this white box between that, uh, you know, between that 360, 375 level. And kind of what I'm looking at here, I would actually go ahead and agree with you. Um, the reason why I would say $400 would actually be a pretty good target. I, I Again, I, I would have to agree. Um, you can see we kind of ranged around right here for BNB uh, in the past. And if I just pull a little bit of local volume on here, uh, that point of control of that previous range does come in at about 384. Mm. So my thinking here is if we can actually get a move through this gap and get uh, flip the bottom of this white box to support, which would essentially be flipping the value area low of this previous range to support, we would essentially open ourselves up to trade back inside of the value area that we traded in back here. So if I just go ahead and extend the value area high and value area low and the POC of that range, my thought here with these, uh, I know these trend lines are thin, they're kind of hard to see. No, they look uh, great. But my they look good. My thought here is if we could leave this higher volume node, we will essentially go seek out this area of balance and mm -hmm. potentially start ranging up here again, uh, like you were saying, in that $400 level. So I, I, I would have to agree with you. Yeah, yeah. B&B, man. I'll just, uh, I just wanted to show you mine just to like for one minute, yeah. just because it's like so fun for us to like, because it's basically saying the same thing with just different colors. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. But uh, great TA, Frankie. I really appreciate that. You know, you. watching you even with the VRVP gave me more confidence with it. You know, I like watching other YouTubers that I love and, you know, I definitely learn from everybody. And I started realizing that these gaps get filled a lot. Like, mm -hmm. and so I pulled a fib here, you know, it come on, barely fits the screen, but you can see we went into the golden pocket, the 0.65 and the 0.618. Great place to accumulate after bouncing off the 706 and institutional support. And then mm -hmm. same thing as you're saying, I'm looking deep at this and I like, I love trading the daily and the 22 hour in tandem, kind of use them back and forth. And I saw mm -hmm. this golden cross, right? I begin to accumulate at a golden cross in the 22. That means I'm front running the golden cross of the daily, right? And the daily's mm -hmm. about to have the golden cross. Just like you're saying, it's all on Bitcoin. Bitcoin makes that move. BNB makes that yep. move. Bitcoin loses the level. We know BNB is going to lose the level as well. But I'm watching this tiny little ascending triangle right here that wants to make its initial level to that resistance point you brought up at 361. And then when we mm -hmm. get there, we get into the gap. And then if we get into this gap, we're likely to head into this area. And I just see 400 and... You know, the line you showed even here, 422 as a, as a really possible area. So that, mm -hmm. that Golden Cross coming on BNB and, you know, the 22 showing signs of life and the Stochastic's giving me some love. And, you know, I, I am feeling some bullish signs for Bitcoin too as well. So, yeah, I mean, uh, spot on, man. I mean, I, and again, we both could be 100% wrong. Like we say, like there's no yeah. guarantees. These are probabilities, but the probabilities are pretty high. Like they really are. Yeah. You know, we, we, we do this every day and we can see things and, you know. It's not saying it's guaranteed, but it, it looks it looks it looks pretty uh it looks pretty spot on there that it could happen for sure. Yeah, and uh, Lifer, I think you said something really important there. I, I kind of talk about this a lot because I, I think this is like one of the most important things, especially on YouTube, right? Uh, you know, you're saying uh, you know, feeling very bullish as I am, you know, longer longer term, like I said, you know, short, you know, if we get you know, the you know, 15 minute is gonna go up and down, but longer term, you know, I, I definitely am feeling bullish. I think this rally can be sustained as long as we don't absolutely dump. Um, and, but like you said, 
we could be wrong. I think there's, uh, you know, I love that, you know, anytime I talk to uh, anyone comes on my show or I go on anyone else's show, uh, you know, I, I think it's really important to talk about that because I think there are some people out there that, uh, you know, may not be as uh, open about admitting that they're not 100% right. Like I always say, listen, we're right a lot more than we're wrong, as you are as well. Um, but, you know, there is a possibility that anything can happen. And I think there are some people out there that, you know, don't really take that approach. They just take the like, you know, this is going to happen, guys, 100 percent. This is going to happen. And that is, you know, that's really dangerous to the community. Right. In my opinion. So I, I just have to say that I love that you said that, you know, we could be wrong. Right. Well, like we're human and no one has a crystal ball. Well, let's break that down. That came from evolution. Right. I started trading and I was a little immature and you have an ego and you want to be yeah. right. So like I pointed out a coin to my buddy and I was like, yo, I'd buy this today. And like next week I was like, yo, you didn't buy this, bro. I told you it was going to 20. It went to 20, man. Mm -hmm. Like I'm the boss. Like I'm good at this. Yep. Like, and yep. I did that with family and friends and I, I pissed enough people off and I realized, and then I also, a bunch of times I was in a trade and I was like, yeah, for sure. And then like I woke up the next morning and I started reading trading in the zone by Mark Douglas. And he said, mm -hmm. what you're doing is number one, you're taking your past experiences. So if you've had failed in your life before you want to be right, cause you want to butter up your, your insecurities, right? So when you go for a trade, you're going to say I'm right. And then when it's not right, you get hurt emotionally. And he's saying yeah. that you should never get hurt emotionally when a trade doesn't go wrong, right or wrong. Every trade could go either way, any single time you open it and there should be no emotions attached to it. Right? So when yeah. you don't think you're right or wrong and the trade plays out, the trade plays out. Right. BNB &B goes to 400. Me and you get to slap hands and we're the bet, yeah. you know, and BNB &B doesn't. We get to say, hey, I mean, that was the probability, but it didn't pan out, you know, or it bounced off an area and there was another area to get in that we found a nice support zone from. Right. So, Absolutely. And yeah, 100 100 percent. It's good for the community. It's good for yourself. Like, yeah, you're not no. And, and then I break it down. You know, it's funny. I say I look at people like that, like, well, I have to be 100 percent right then. So I either have to be 100 percent right or I can't be you know, I can't be wrong. I have to be 100 percent right. And if I was 100 percent right. right that means every trade I put out would hit. And then think yeah. about that. Everyone would be like, they'd go, there would be this rumor around the world. Like this guy, every time he puts out a trade, he hits it. Like he's a hundred percent. So then mm. everyone would join my channel. They would leave every other channel. And listen, there would be no yep. one on the other side of the trade. So we wouldn't win. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you actually, you actually have trade. to lose sometimes to be a good trader. Because if you won every time, everyone would follow you. And then you wouldn't be able to sell to anyone because the whole world would be buying <laughs> one trade, right? Like, because they'd be like, well, he's That's the right. one that wins every time. So I well, thought it yeah, all the way to the end. And it doesn't even make sense. Like, you can't be 100%. It just wouldn't even right. work. Even for your trading community, it wouldn't work. You know, like, right. 100 percent. I say that all the time. Like, uh, you know, if if you're going to, you know, if 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 there was someone who was 100 percent right, like you said, everyone in the world would just follow that guy. Why yeah. would I have a job if I could just listen yeah. to what this guy says and just make all this money super easy and just tell him, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just I think it's super funny. And, and that's a perfect that's a per I've never even thought of that. Like, yeah, like if everyone did that, eventually you would have nobody to sell to. And it literally wouldn't work even if it was possible. So, right. yeah, so funny, man. <laughs> well, moving forward into like funny topics, man, this is awesome. Um, see, I always smile. I always laugh when I'm with you. Like it's always a good time. <laughs> Next topic is about the Super Bowl commercials, right? Crypto yep. firm ditches the Super Bowl commercials this year, right? So like we didn't see a lot of Super Bowl commercials this year, right? We didn't see it, you know, and they were pretty funny last year and they were eerily from, they had a premonition, right? With, you know, Larry David being like, nah, that's, nah, I wouldn't deal with that. That thing's probably going to go down the tubes, right? And like, it was kind of interesting. Like it did go down the tubes. Um, yep. You know, what are your thoughts on SBF? Of course, you know, what are your, you know, is he just, my thing is this, you know, do you think he should ever squiggle away? Does he deserve jail time? You know, and, and uh, you know, I think he deserves jail time, but yep. uh, you know, people say, Oh, he didn't hurt anybody. And Kevin O'Leary loves him, but you know, <laughs> and, and secondly, you know, if you could make a commercial for the Super Bowl, I'll put you on, you know, what, what would it be? Or, you know, uh, or what coin would you like to see? Uh, or, you know, is there any kind of commercial that you would like to see during the Super Bowl, you know? Okay. Yeah. I, I love that question. Uh, so, uh, as far as SPF, listen, I, I think he deserves jail time. Listen, this, uh, you know, the, the one thing I will say is like, was he maybe not the, maybe was, was he the fall guy? Was he not the main, uh, you know, bad actor here? That I don't know, right? And, you know, it's not my job to find out, uh, you know, if I had if I had the time and the and the resources to put into figuring it out, I would. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I do think he he does deserve jail time. He wrecked a lot of people. Um, I think, you know, obviously it is his fault. It could have been avoided. Um, so, yeah, 100%, I think he should be punishable. You know, unless it does come out somehow that he really didn't do it, obviously, you know, but I think our justice system will do, you know, if the justice system finds him guilty, you know, he's very likely guilty. So, uh, you know, if that winds up being the case, I think he 100% should 
do jail time. A lot of people lost a lot of money. Um, and, you know, I, I think we see too often these these big uh, you know, w- whether it's a billionaire or, you know, a high up public figure, you know, these people get to walk a lot of the time, right? They know all these people in high places. They're really, you know, they're in bed with all the politicians. So, you know, they kind of get the a little slap on the wrist, you know, even uh, I, maybe I think it might have been an interview I was watching with uh, Jordan Belfort, maybe um, or it was somebody that did or uh, Maybe it was Billy McFarlane, the guy who did the uh, fire festival, which wound up being a big scam. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was one of those guys and, you know, really, really rich guy. And, uh, you know, they talk about how, you know, jail for these people is not what real jail is. So, uh, you know, I think that's absolutely I you uh, if, if it was up to yeah, me, they go to Danbury and play tennis in Connecticut, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember whoever I was watching the interview with, he was like, yeah, I was out on the tennis courts with this person when I was locked up. And I was like, what do you mean you're on the like these people, in my opinion, especially like SBS. If they find him guilty, which I, I personally think he is, throw that guy into gen pop, right? Put him in general population. Uh, you know, this guy deserves the jail experience, right? Um, but a lot of times that's not what happens. So, uh, you know, I, 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 hope he, I hope he does get what he deserves. Uh, as long as he is deserving of it, then, you know, just give it, you know, give, give him what he deserves. Don't give him, you know. He'll, uh, get, a, hey, he'll uh, get a king size bed in the Sega Genesis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, oh, it's not, an, it's not the new Xbox, but yeah, at least but, I got video yeah. games. But like, yeah, I, I, I think they really should, uh, you know, th- that should not really be the case. But, you know, it's the world we live in. But, yeah, I think it should 100% get jail time. Um, you know, ruined a lot of people's lives. So 100%. Also, uh, back to that uh, Super Bowl commercial, uh, the FTX commercial, which is hilarious. Larry David's like, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, trust me, I'm never wrong about this stuff. Yeah. And God, that just hit, it just it hit different. So uh, yeah, absolutely hilarious outcome of that commercial. Um, but for my own commercial, I would, uh, if I could pick a, a Super Bowl commercial crypto related to uh, put out there, I, I would go ahead and, uh, I would probably make a commercial on um, taking profit, right? I think that's – like I wouldn't actually promote something. I, I would promote an idea. Pay yourself when you're in the green because whether you're day trading, leverage trading, scalp trading, swing trading, or just long-term investing, I think something a lot of people have trouble with is knowing when to take the money off the table because when you see it in the green – you think in that next, oh, I get, I get a little, you know, hundred, whatever it is, a hundred more dollars. The a thousand greed more dollars. just kicks in, man. It's so 100%. creepy. It, yeah. A hundred percent. And for me personally, uh, you know, I talk about this a lot. When I started trading, you know, I think some people might struggle with the TA aspect of it. Some people might struggle with the risk management uh, aspect of it. Me, it was all greed. That was my biggest downfall when I started trading. Um, you know, it was just always holding on for that extra dollar or moving my stop loss or I'm, I'm sorry, not my stop loss, moving my take profit up. Like, you know, oh, I'll get an extra, extra dollar out of this one. And then eventually it goes down a little bit and I'm like, no, no, no it'll go back up. And then it goes down a little more. Oh, it'll go back up. This is a good retrace. Okay. And then you wind up getting stop. And then you get close to your stop loss. And I'm like, no, no, no. I know it's going to go back up, move that stop loss down. And now you went from you know, X amount of dollars in profit to moving your stop loss down and just continually chewing away the pro- uh, chewing away at a bigger loss. Uh, so greed was something that I really struggled with. So I would go ahead and, uh, you know, that once I got that under control and I was able to cut my losses, uh, you know, set my take profit, set my stop losses and leave them and not touch them uh, and actually pay myself when I'm in the green. That was when trading completely changed for me. Um, you know, I thought it was, um, oh, I must be bad at TA or, oh, I must be bad at this, but it was really just the greed. So uh, my my uh, Super Bowl commercial would be pay yourself when you're in the green. And I would find a clever, funny way to, uh, yeah. to make the commercial. I love it. That's awesome, man. You know, educate them while you're entertaining them and let them know. <laughs> yeah, taking profits, you know, uh, it's... Uh, for me now, like I have a new, like I have like a nice new wave, not a new wave trading, but like when I'm like in the thick of heavily doing tons of swing trades, you know, I started this about two years ago and it really changed the way I traded. I put two take profits. When the first one hits, I have an automatic signal that brings it to break even, right? Yep. So boom. And then if I go down, because a lot of times what newbies do is they have a take profit at 60%. It gets to 55 and they're like, oh, I want to wait to hit the take profit. Sometimes they think it has to because that's what we put out. They, oh, it has to hit the measured right. move. But like, I always take 70% of the measured move. I think that's a smart idea, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah, you know, gra- grab it. You know, people forget you're taking money from other people. People are taking money from you. The mm-hmm. faster you get in and the faster you get out, I mean, the, the, the quicker you can compound profits, right? Uh but eventually you get burned enough, right? Like I rode uh, Bitcoin up and didn't know about the halving, thought I was in a new, and I had traded for 
eight years before that, but I thought I was in a new mm-hmm. innovative, you know, uh, technology that was never going down. Yeah. Oh, I was at the beginnings. Like I knew there was going to be a slump, but not, I didn't know crypto did the 80%. Bitcoin did the halving, <laughs> you, you know, like, and that's <laughs> terrifying. If you don't know about it, it's like, Oh my God. Oh, I mean, it's like, it's, Oh God, it's, 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 it's insane. You know I mean? You, <laughs> Cause then you're like, the good thing about it is you're like, Oh, I need to get educated now. Right. And mm-hmm. you know, I may, I, may, I, I don't think I would have met you because like I got into trading groups. I, I deep mm-hmm. dived into crypto TA. I, mm-hmm. you know, as much as we, me and you are YouTubers, we're like of the crypto TA community, like me, yep. you, Jason Casper, you know, Eric crown, Tom crown, like we're YouTubers, but we're mainly based on, you know, results based live streams. Like we like to show you what we're looking at. We like to show probability. I can't wait to come back tomorrow and look at a chart and see if it hit the area that I've put out before. Like that's the funnest thing for me. Yeah. So yeah, man, you inspire me, man. Uh, anytime I think of ever stopping, I look at everyone else and I'm like, no way. Like, there's just no yep. way. Like, uh, you know, you, you, you compile your work every day and mm-hmm. you look back years from now and you'll never regret the hard work that you put in, you know, never. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, man. And, you know, it's like I always think that I, I always I, I think about, you know, when you're on your deathbed, right? Am I going to, mm. you know, I, am I going to regret not putting in 100 percent? Probably not. Like I, I would way rather, uh, you know, even if I do regret it. Right. I would way rather um, regret like, wow, man, like maybe I did spend a lot of time working, but like I'll never regret trying my hardest. Right. Mm. Uh, rather than wow, you know, you know, maybe I spent a little more time with my family, which is obviously extremely important. Um, but, you know, like, nah, nah, really nah, nah, nah. trade all day, all... trade all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's good. <laughs> Charts only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I just think it's, e- it's an easier pill to swallow knowing that you put your all into something rather than thinking, you know, uh, oh, man, you know, I, I, I could have tried my hardest on this. I wonder what would have happened. It's that what if, what if I tried as hard as I could? What if I did actually stream every day? What if I, you know, did try that really hard thing? I, I think it's an easy, it's a hard, that's a much harder pill to swallow. At least know, um, you know, I used to be really afraid to fail when I was younger and then quickly learned that, you know, it's a much, uh, you know, once one opportunity flies away, and you didn't try it or I didn't try it, I was like, wow, that's a bad feeling. I could have tried that and it could have worked. Uh, and then I, I got like addicted to failing. I tried a million, I tried a million and one things. I've always been kind of a, uh, you know, never wanted a nine to five, never thought it was for me, always did different side hustles and businesses. And, uh, you know, it came obviously with a lot of failure, right? Like the first 11 things I tried failed. And then, you know, eventually one thing winds up working. And uh, so, yeah, I, I just, I feel like it's, uh, you know, I'd rather swallow the pill of failure than regret is basically yeah. what I'm trying to say. And you know, kind of like a scary truth of that is too, is like you can go 85, but if God in the universe knows you're not putting in that hundred, like, cause I used to do things like I'd put a lot of work in, but I wouldn't cap it off. Like I wouldn't, yeah. like if I had, if you put a gun in my head and I had to say it, I said, no, nah, I didn't go all the way. I went like yep. 80. And the thing is you still went a lot. You took a lot of your life, but like, you got to complete it. Like you got to complete the mission. Like you got to go all the way. Like you have to go to sleep every night and know, I did everything in my, in my power today to, to, yep. to, to help tomorrow. Right. Um, you do that. The bit squad does that. I, I keep going back to you guys. Cause you guys inspire me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wasn't that big. I got onto ATB. That really was a spotlight for me. Um, and just, just realizing what it took, you know, um, uh, realizing what an everyday hustle really meant. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, where, and, and honestly, and then see, and then being inspired where it could take you. Right. Like yeah. watching, the bit squad by Lamborghinis itself. And it's, and it's not about the money, but it's about accomplishment. It's yeah, about, of course, once you don't have to scrap scrap for your nine to five dollars, you can begin to put money into your ideas, into your visions and mm-hmm. into creativity. Like, you know, when you're scrabbling for just to eat and to feed your family, like you don't have that time. You don't have that space to create that time to relax, you know, um, blessed that you got there, blessed that I got there, but yeah, we got our butt kicked for years and years. They say everyone you see, even if they have 5,000 followers on YouTube, 10,000, anyone you see finally on YouTube with somewhat of a following, bet a hundred to a thousand dollars or more that they failed a hundred times at a hundred other things before they finally began to achieve some type of success, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, speaking to that, you know, it, it doesn't always necessarily for me, at least my personal story, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the businesses I try, I mean, almost all the actual businesses I had had nothing to do with crypto. Right. Mm. So, uh, you know, it, it, but 
those still play just as big of a part of mm. me doing what I'm doing now, even if it had nothing to do with crypto, right? So, you know, maybe I had, uh, you know, some other kind of business, but, you know, going through that business, learning those lessons and then failing from it is what helps me do what I do now the way I do it. So, uh, you know, it's not always like, you know, uh, I think a lot of people might think that it's, you know, I wasn't sitting here since, you know, 2015 trying to do a crypto YouTube channel and I failed at that constantly, but it was still all those ir uh, unrelated businesses that I did still were 100% um, applicable to what I do now in this weird way, you know? I mean, you tell me I was in t television and I was a director of photography for independent film. So I had lenses when I started my YouTube channel. I already had cameras and lenses. I had already been a video editor. So mm -hmm. I was like, OK, like I know how to make professional television. I watched it for years. You know, I got to get right. the lighting. I got to get the you know, I know how to set depth of field. Oh, let me get a mm -hmm. Sigma prime lens. Oh, let me get this. Let me do, you know. And then I was like, wow, I get to use my creativity for my past my past uh, endeavors and what I did before and bring it into crypto, which is like, yeah. you know, and then it, it's just awesome. Uh, Cause we are yeah, at the end of the day, we're in, we're in TV. We're like this is media. The internet mm -hmm. is going to become the new TV. It already is really. So 100%. like, I mean, this is media. We're, we're media professionals creating entertainment and educational uh, videos for the world. And it's uh, so yeah, inspiring. I, I had, I, I did not realize uh, that you had a background in TV. It's like very similar to my background. And I have the same experience where, you know, uh, you know, we do have editors at BitBoy Crypto that obviously, you know, help me out a ton. But sometimes, you know, we're in a pinch. I got to get a video out quick or, you know, a, a lot of times I just edit my own videos because I love that still, you know, and it's cool that, you know, it incorporates all those things. It's like, oh, cool. I get to edit a video today. It's like I still get to do this other passion of mine. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I just wanted to touch on what you said about, um, you know, when you anytime you see a YouTuber that has any kind of following, I think there's this ma this mass misconception of, uh, you know, someone might think like, oh, life, you're lucky, man. All you got to do is make videos about crypto all day. Like, wow, must be hard. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's, re it's really hard. It's a lot of work. And, you know, on the surface, it looks, you know, people don't see the the research that goes into every video that might that, you know, someone might put out or, you know, uh, the, the production that goes into not only the physical production as far as lights and cameras, but like even the production of like, what am I going to talk about on my live stream today? What am I, well, you know, or, or, you know, for Ben's live stream, like, what are the stories? You know, like, there's so much stuff that goes into this, the titles, the thumbnails, all this stuff takes work and time. And then on our end, we're also trading and putting out, you know, uh, premium content and all this other stuff. It's, it's, it, there's a million and one things going on. I was up till and, 12 last night, putting out charts. So my eyes were bleeding. Like my hand yeah. was hurting on the mouse. My feet hurt from my stand up desk. Like I put in 16 <laughs> yeah. hours last yesterday and like, yeah, today I have tutors. I have to tutor someone at three later. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to go on ATV. It's just like this, like it, it's just, it, you know what I mean? But if, if this, this is what you want, like I said, my wife said today, you have a busy day. I said, Hey, if you want to have a good life, if you want to make it, if you want to get to the top, then you're going to have a busy day every day then. Like, it is what it is. Let's go. Let's have a busy day. Let's push to the limit, you know? Let's yeah. fill it up. And that's like, not to say that I don't love laying on the couch and watching TV, but, you know, a lot of times, it, like you said, if you want that, you know, if you want the light, if you want to live the life that you w really want, these people who live those, you know, you might see someone in that car that you like or, you know, or you might see somebody who might be ahead of you in life, which is totally fine. Everybody's on their own journey. But, uh, you know, the more you surround, the more I've surrounded myself with, uh, you know, people who are in positions that I would eventually like to level up to, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you realize like these people aren't laying around watching TV. No. These people aren't, you know, no. and it's important, you know, I'm learning now that it is important to take some time to yourself. Always. Obviously, you yeah. know, health is important, but uh you know, the 1% is the, I always say this, like the 1% is the 1% because they do what 99% of people think is crazy. Yep. Right. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I, that, that's kind of how I look at things and, you know, levels never, um, you know, levels are continuous, right. Yep. I, that's another thing that I learned is like, you know, three years ago, I might've thought a level up was, you know, you know, one thing. And now I'm sitting here today and that level's hey, way behind you're 50, me, but there's you're 50 levels, levels above. Ahead. Yeah. You're like, Oh, I can't play. but that's, you know what I mean? I mean, that's like, I want to become a millionaire. Then you become a millionaire and you're like, all right, a million dollars isn't as much as it was when I didn't have a million dollars. Now I want a 10 million, you know, like, and then, exactly. and then you have that 20 million. You're like, I remember moves. when I first had my first mill and you know, you're sparking one thing I want to say, uh, just about, you know, sacrifice. I started mm -hmm. my stream and I haven't taken a day off since February of 21. Right. And I, I had a, like a used sales boat. We weren't rich or loaded mm -hmm. middle-class family, but I had a nice, yeah. you know, good used sales boat. 
I haven't been on it since I started the channel, right? So like, mm. like you know, I, I love it. I get testimonials from people around the world. I've exchanged my personal experience for life for helping other people gain. A, and, and maybe this is for the next four or five years, maybe 10 years from now, I'll be on a sailboat and I'll have my time and I probably won't stream every single day. I'm sure at one point the streak will end. But Absolutely. like, this is the pocket I'm in now, right? And, mm -hmm. and I realized that. I said, you know, fine, I don't get to do all the things that I used to do leisurely for myself, right? Mm -hmm. But I have feedback from people from around the world. Uh, I have a loving community that I never had. Like, so some things have been given away and some things have been taken back. But just, just like he's saying, like, don't think we just sit here, press record. Someone edits it for us. We go out and have dinner all day and we're walking around. Like, man, I work till my eyes hurt. I work till my hands hurt. Like, uh, every YouTuber you see or anyone getting anywhere in life is grinding their butt off. Like the silver spoon only can take you so far and people can see through it at one point. And it really, it, do, it doesn't last like and even if someone that has that money, everyone knows, oh, yeah, that's the guy that just kind of, like, he yep. shows up, but, like, his daddy gave him everything, you know? It's like, yep. there's, no, there's no respect there. It's not the same. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want the silver spoon, even if someone were going to give it to you. You want to grind for it. You want to take it from the very bottoms all the way to the top. There's just no yep. shortcuts in life. Um, and then you're going to, like Frankie said, like, he got his butt kicked in all these different jobs. Now he has that. He, ha he, knows, he knows who he is. You could leave mm -hmm. Frankie right now in the middle of the night. Everyone could say, we, we don't like you. Nothing. He could be all alone, and he's already built that internal strength. He'll be like, all right, mm -hmm. I'll find more people that like me. I'll find another yep. hustle. Like, I don't need you guys. You know, I don't need someone to cater to me. Like, I can build myself from the ground up, right? So, but without Absolutely. failing and throwing, getting thrown down all those times, you wouldn't have known that about yourself. Like, mm -hmm. there's no way. So, failure is success. That's how it is. Um, you know, that's kind of, uh, you know, where we go. So, 100%. With that. We'll talk about failure and success of the British pound. Is the British okay. pound going to fail or succeed? Um, they don't want to be called the Britcoin, right? They don't want to be <laughs> they don't want to be associated with any type of cryptocurrency here. So we're just going to talk about how the digital pounds, the digital pound, <laughs> the digital <laughs> b -b -b the digital pound is coming out. And we should leave that in, everyone. This is good enough. But the digital, digital Ponzi scheme. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe there was a slip there, right? But uh, <laughs> digital Ponzi scheme. But um, yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? You know, uh, what do you think about D, you know CBDCs in general? Mm -hmm. um, they scare the, the the bejesus out of me. It's like, give us your address. Know everything you do. We'll cut you off. Social media, uh, social yep. uh, levels, right? Like, oh, you didn't say what we wanted you to say. You know, he doesn't get the money. <laughs> you know, like they're now they're doing that in China. Right? I've heard that. Like. They're really doing that in China. Like you have a social credit score. It's like that's like, oh yeah. Like that's creepy because if it if it can exist somewhere else in the world, I mean, is that headed to here? Like what's going on with this? What do you think? Well, yeah, it, it is crazy, right? Because uh, I'll never forget I saw a, a Black Mirror episode. Great show, great uh, show. and it was <laughs> it was like the social credit score episode where it was like uh, you know it's basically like a dystopia right where like everyone has a social credit score and uh you know if you're not you everyone has to be fake to each other even if you don't like somebody and like it just it's a disaster and i'm like you know i finished that episode and i remember talking about it you know wherever i was at the time being like wow man imagine that ever actually became a thing and someone was like oh what do you mean they do that in china and i i looked it up they really do that in china they have cameras everywhere if and if you get caught like jaywalking you might, uh, you know, if you get enough uh, deductions or whatever or demerits, they'll take away your right to public transportation, which is insane. I mean, you do more jaywalking. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's like it, 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 it's just it, it's a complete overstepping of uh, of just freedom in general. And, uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, with CBDCs, it, it, it you know makes me a little bit nervous too, and it I think it is kind of a double edged sword here because, uh, you know, we we kind of you know I think some people are kind of rooting for that because they see that as uh, one of the big pillars of mass adoption. Um, but you know, anytime the government really decides to get involved in something, a lot of times there's a lot of overstepping, overregulation, and they kind of just like the the bully at the school. They're going to push everybody out of the way, take all the toys, make them their own. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm that's kind of what I would be worried about here. Um, and, you know, I always do say unpopular opinion, um, but I, I do think, you know, the R word regulation is 
very important to get crypto where we want it as far as market cap goes, total market cap, right? Um, you know, we need that regulation to get the uh, the regulated institutions in, right? Because these people have an obligation to their clients, and they they cannot invest in something that is unregulated. So in order to get all these all this big big money in, we need regulation to some degree. My problem is. I don't know, you know, it, it, saying, hey, like, let's get a little regulation, but be nice, right? Don't overstep. And that's a really hard thing for, uh, for the government, you know, not to do. So uh, I do think that, you know, CBDCs could be the start of, you know, I think they they would essentially just turn it into a fiat, right? Like, they're still just going to, uh, you know, be able to inflate it the way they want to. They're going to make it, they're going to make the crypto game uh, their game, right? They're going to make their own rules and they're going to, they're going to regulate everything that isn't playing by their rules out of existence. Um, so I think it's a really, really dicey game that we're playing. Um, and yeah, I think CBDCs is a step in the direction of that social credit score society that I think a lot of people are afraid of. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it has to be worried. And, and now that I know that this is actually going on in other countries it makes it that much more, you know, possible or or uh that much more of a tangible idea to really yeah. think about so yeah one thing i never asked you i'm just super curious to get your answer is you know what do you think of the uh you know the the, the validity of bitcoin do you think the u.s government would ever try to ban bitcoin like they banned gold in in the 1970s do you think we could see something like that um or do you think bitcoin is just you know too untouchable too immutable too borderless um mm -hmm. you know what's your take on bitcoin do you think it it, it, it has to be worried uh, do you think there's some fear there from governments and Bitcoin, you know? Uh, well, so I, I do think there is fear on the government side. You know, they may might be afraid of Bitcoin. I mean, it's a much better solution to our money problem than the solutions that we're trying to come up with. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I, I think it would be hard to ban. Right. Uh, I, I mean, they can make it really, really hard for all of these companies to function in the U.S., but at the end of the day, you know, uh, I think there would there would need to be a lot of things that change uh, to really to stop somebody from like, you know, even if they, you, you know, they made it impossible to get onto exchanges uh, in America. It's like there's things like VPNs, like if there was a banned, uh, you know, if they banned, uh, you know, whatever, like say Coinbase, that's it. Coinbase is gone. You can't use Coinbase. You have to use Fedbase. Right. And that's where you get all the crypto and it goes through, uh, you know, it's all regulated into the ground. Uh, you know, people are going to try to use a VPN to get on Coinbase anyway. And then, like they, were, they would just need to do so much to really ban Bitcoin um, or just crypto in general. Uh, so I don't know if they'll ever they're ever going to fully be able to get rid of Bitcoin, but I, I, they can try to make it really hard. Right. We need everything in our favor to get mass adoption. And, you know, the government does have the power to kind of just like put the brakes on it enough to just completely halt mass adoption. But you'll mm -hmm. still have those, you know, those uh, those forward thinkers or those independent thinkers or, you know, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, still using it and finding ways around that back door. You know, these subcultures that we have. Uh, you know, crypto kind of was a subculture at some point, and now it's just gaining more and more popularity, becoming more mainstream. Um, so I don't think they'll ever fully ban it. I think they're going to have a really hard time doing that. Um, but I do think they're definitely threatened uh, by crypto, which, again, is kind of why I think, um, you know, I will say this. I'm bullish on crypto in general. I think it is going to be, you know, the the technology is you can't argue with it, right? It's it's too useful of a technology for the masses not to adopt at some point, just like the Internet. Um, but I think if they do regulate it, uh, my bear case for crypto, again, I am a crypto bull, but uh, if I were to come up with a bear case, it's, you know, maybe we do get the regulation we need, but I do think that it's very unlikely that the government is going to come in and regulate the way that the people want it regulated. I think they are just going to wind up overstepping and that could wind up kind of being, you know, maybe it'll be mainstream, but they might put a crazy capital gains tax on it, right? Like your crypto tax, uh, crypto capital gains might be 80% because people are getting 100 Xs, right? So they might kind of bog it down so people are getting more realistic returns. So that's kind of what makes me nervous. Yeah, I didn't like that. Man. <laughs> you know, this has been awesome. We covered all the topics, but I had three more bonus questions from the lifers. You know, um, I kind of asked them anything you want to ask Frankie. They're pretty basic. They're not too crazy. But, you yeah. know, first question is, what is your favorite time frame if you have one? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'd say I think mine's I, I kind of have to say the 15 and the one hour. Like, you know what I mean? But like, yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite time frame? You know, just just one. Just people are curious. They want to know what time frame you like. You know? Yeah, I, I, I'll say this. I'm kind of the same exact way. I, the 15 minute is one of my favorite time frames. I, I, I think it's it's a big enough time frame to not be like 
considered a micro time frame. Uh, so it's 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 big enough to have some kind of validity, right? It's not like looking at the one minute, um, but it also, you know, you could sit there and watch it and see it play out without having to wait all day. Um, but again, uh, like you just said, you know, I know a lot, a lot of traders like to pair things, right? So for me, I would say 15 minute, and uh, the two and four hour. So two, four, and 15, I, I, I like to work with these time frames together a lot. Yeah, I just, I've probably traded the two hour like 10 times in my life. Like I've probably looked at it, like I just recently, like a couple times, because, you know, it'd be curving up so nice. And I'm like, man, I just want to try this one. It looks better than the other one. Why don't I take this right. one? You know, it's funny. Like sometimes I'm like, hey, I'll take this one because it looks better. But like, I started trading the 22 heavily the last year. You know what I mean? Right. And recently I just added the 333 minute. Just to like, you know what I mean? And it's, just like, I try to say, what the heck time frame is that, you know? Um, yeah, well, I, it's funny because sometimes you play around with these weird time frames. Uh, you know, I personally don't really have a weird time frame that I usually look at. But, uh, you know, I know that, uh, you know, I, I had Evan Aldo on my show one time and he was telling me, he's like, yeah, man, he goes, 10 hour. 10 hours my time frame i don't know why i found it i like it it works for me and uh yeah i just like it, it's crazy some people get these little uh see i actually dz dz told me that you have a secret fib level that you may have uh teased on atb so like even stuff like that like some yeah, people yeah. find these these yeah. secret fib levels an and institutional like, trader told me about it he's like yo i institutional trader really? for years he's like yo on the low like he's like they know everyone goes to the 618 he's like so they started banging on them and stopping them out at the 706 you know and no like, way yeah and so i started using it i teach my students it and you'll eerily see like so now like my golden pocket is really like 618 to the 706 like i kind of cover that i mean not you know what i mean i still have my golden pocket but right. i i always have in the back of my mind like they may reach down to that 706 and it's gonna I be a nice that. little nice little grab you know and it's the lifer um, pocket Man, you got to have your own little things, right? I mean, you have your own little stuff. Like, everyone has something yep. if you do it every single day. And what I tell everyone, too, is anything will work if you use it all the time. If I trade the 10-hour for the next two months, I'm going to be good at it. And eventually, I'm going to be able to pump on the 10-hour. Like, it's going to work for me. But if, you know, so it just, anyone could be good at any indicator or oscillator that they use, you know. Like, you can use support and resistance and nothing. Yeah. Like, you can use, you know, volume and, and price action. Like, uh, there's many different ways to go about it. Um all right, favorite coin. You may not have one. I don't know if you do. Um, if you had to allocate today, like it was the, or you could only put one in the wallet and not Bitcoin mm -hmm. and Ethereum. All right, well, because like, we already know that you probably, everyone, yeah, yeah damn. But you know, <laughs> what's your favorite all? If you had to kind of take a speculative chance or if you like something mm -hmm. that you've been watching for a while, what's your favorite all out there? Uh, hmm. Favorite alt other than, um, well, I will say this. I'll, I'll, Other than I'll Frank Inu. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Candle Inu. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll i say this. Uh, you know, I, I'm definitely, I, I'll give you two because one of them is kind of like kind of piggybacking off of Bitcoin and ETH. Number one, uh, you know, XRP. Uh, I have a big okay. bag of XRP. Okay. It's, it's, it's an alt that I never sold. I, I, I say that all the time. You know, this is something I held, right? Uh, you know, I. It, it, I might have a little bit of an emotional connection to XRP. It was one of the first things I ever bought in 2016, 2017. So, uh, but, you know, I, I, I do think that they're going to win the lawsuit eventually or they're going to settle. I think it'll wind up, um, you know, I think it's going to be hard to get rid of XRP regardless. I think even if they get banned uh, or, you know, uh, regulated into the ground in the U.S., I think they'll just go overseas. So I don't think XRP is going to go anywhere no matter what happens with the SEC. However, um, I do think that they have a high likelihood of winning the lawsuit. Um, so I just see high, uh, uh, low risk, high reward with XRP uh, just because when I got into XRP, it was like, uh, you know, or at least for this previous cycle, it was, you know, very, very low. Right. And, and it was I had a little bit. Then the lawsuit happened. It dumped a little bit. I picked up a little bit more. And the reason I say low risk, high reward is because, you know, even if they lost the lawsuit, even from where it is right now, like how much lower are we going to really go? And uh, and I think if they win, it could go absolutely ballistic. Mm -hmm. I do want to preface that with um, I don't think XRP is going to go to ten thousand dollars. There's some people out there that think it's going to go to five hundred dollars, ten thousand dollars because there's going to be some crazy buyback program and uh, kind of similar to what we were talking with regulation. I just don't I don't personally think it's ever going to go to that price, uh, I, especially if it gets adopted. Uh, you know, I think they're, you know, the powers that be are going to do everything, even if that was the case where they're like, hey, we're going to do this and it's going to run it up to 10K. I think they're going to do something to counteract that. They know that a lot of people hold XRP are waiting for it to moon. Um, so I think they will try to, you know, 
if it does get massively adopted into the traditional financial system, I think they will try to, uh, you know, just kind of keep that under control. So I don't think it's going to 10K, but I do think it'll perform really well if they win the lawsuit. So I would say XRP, also a big fan of Cosmos. Um, mm. I think that in the next bull run, I think that uh, uh, a narrative that we might see other than AI might be interoperability. Yep. Um, just because at Hubbin, this point, baby. there's... Band protocol, Adam coming yeah. back into this um, into the forefront. You know, like what they yeah. should, they never really got their bull run. Think about it. This last bull run, Band did run up in 2019, one to 20 bucks. Adam ran up, but like Adam should have hit 100, 150 bucks. Like it, it, like it didn't do its thing. Like it did a 10x. It went from five to yeah. like 48 bucks. Like it was kind of, yeah. it was for what it did and for what it was supposed to do. I feel like it, we didn't get our, we didn't get our massive Adam run like we were supposed to, you know? So I think it has its time coming, man. And I'm a long-term holder of Adam too. I've been holding yeah. it for a long time since $3. Uh, I, and, and I didn't sell in the last run and I, I don't, I'm just planning on holding that thing for, yeah. it connects too many chains. It has too much going on behind the scenes. That's another thing about crypto is there's coins that are really doing what the does is, but nobody knows. You know yeah. what I mean? Like how many yeah. coins have used ban on the back end? Nobody knows that. Like, right. You know, man, you, yeah. you yeah, you got it, man. I like it. I own 10,000 XRP. Probably not enough for you. I held 20,000 yeah. at one point. You know, I got in 16, 20 cents, right? I bought that yep. low at March 20 when we took a dip. I threw in like 500 bucks. It wasn't a lot, but it yep. turned into a, a, a pretty nice chunk when it got to like 70 oh, yeah. cents. So I sold off at like 56 Bought back nice. in between 30 and, nice. you know, 40 cents. And I, I, I hold 10,000 now. And one of my best friends, he owns like 120,000. Like him and his whole oh, family, yeah. like it, their XRP. He's called the, he was called the XRP muser. He's now the crypto muser on YouTube, <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, but yeah I, I, XRP to the moon. Like I said, you know, in my opinion, at least, you know, where, where I was picking it up, it really low risk, low reward for the most part. Dude, this was amazing. Or low low risk, high reward. This is one of the best interviews we've ever had. Good alpha, good information, real life story situations. We dug deep. Uh, we went yeah. over data, Bitcoin, uh, the British pound. We talked about the FTX debacle and the Super Bowl. I mean, we covered almost the most pre prevalent topics that are going to be coming this week. Um, pretty awesome. One last thing. Are you going to be watching the Super Bowl? If you are, where, with who? And, um, and then send us on out. I'll be done for the rest of the interview. Everyone, thank you so much. And Frankie, take it away with that question and then give us some awesome like last thoughts for the end of the interview for sure yeah so uh this is uh i talk about this sometimes on my stream not a big sports guy i uh yeah i don't know for whatever reason i didn't really grow up in a big sports family uh so unless i got money on a game or uh, i'm a ufc guy but uh but yeah, not a big football guy, so uh, I, I don't care who wins, uh, but I will be there for the commercials. I do believe the uh, there is a party going on at the Hit Factory with BitBoy Crypto, so I think I will be there. Um, but yeah, uh, Lifer, I just want to say, man, thank you so much for having me on the show. And uh, for anybody out there watching, looking to get into crypto, looking to get into TA, or just learning how to trade, just remember, uh, you know, I, in my opinion, 99% of day traders fail um, because they give up, right? Because I think failing is part of the process of becoming profitable. Um, so, you know, you, you may try. You're likely going to fail a lot at first. So just stick with it. Um, stick with it. Don't give up. And uh, just manage your risk. It's all about uh, small wins, not hitting a giant home run. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme. You have to learn the skills. You have to practice over time and learn from your mistakes. And, uh, yeah, that's all, that, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for having me on, Lifer. Asta pasta. Amazing. We'll see you all next week for the price report. Thank you so much. God bless.